Hey, hey, Mark Rodriguez here. And this is Jupy Chan, also known as Ninja Jupy, or you just call me Wendy. Hi. Yes, uh, you're watching the review, Sancto, where everything and anything may be reviewed. And now we're watching Smile 2. And this one, I want to warn you guys, it's still opening weekend, and there's going to be lots of spoilers because just the ending itself is kind of like, how can we not mention it, and how can we not go into it? So we're going to. We're going to go all out, guys, so this time, just be warned that spoilers, if you haven't seen the movie yet, you know, spoiler warning, last chance. So, uh, right off the bat, the movie starts off six days after the first one. If you guys remember, we did kind of bring it up on the last review, where um, Rose, despite all her efforts, unfortunately got killed by the spinal thing. Mm -hmm. And um, the detective guy that was her friend got to see her do that, so now he got the curse. So now six days later, he's trying to uh, find someone else to pass it on, and he finds these like I guess these bad jugular guys. I guess yeah. he kind of rationalizes it that I mean, if you're gonna kill someone, might as well be someone bad, you know, whatever. Yeah. So he tries to arrange it to kill someone while someone else's watches. There's a but there's a gunfight, and he accidentally kills the guy too. So it's like oh fuck and whatever. But then another person did witness this. And even though the detective guy kind of, sort of got away, but not really, um, now he he's He definitely got rid of the curse because the guy that that showed up, he saw what happened. But unfortunately, Mr. Detective Guy, he's running away. And what happens? Yeah, he gets hit by a car. Yeah, and he, you know, you know, sometimes you get, you know, you may see someone with the accident and get hit. Say, oh, they have a few frozen bones, fractures. Yeah, you you can't come back from what he how he got hit. Yeah, he got hit like Final Destination style. Ooh, so anyways, uh, this one dude is like another drug dealer and stuff. And what happens is that now, of course, the the main movie starts. We got um, Sky Riley, this super big pop star, a bit of like Lady Gaga vibes in her here and there. Oh, so wasn't Lady Gaga? Gee, I got it confused. Uh huh. And anyway, she's coming back. It's a big comeback tour. Um, it's explained that she was popular in the past, but she got in a tragic car accident and you know she got into drugs and stuff so now this is her coming back you know she's all cleaned up she's all good brand new look all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so what happens is that um despite being sober for a year or so um she still has horrible back pain she got leftover scars and stuff from the from the car accident mm -hmm. so she still goes with this dealer guy that just happens to be this same guy to get some drugs for her for her back pain. Yeah, some Vicodin. Like she takes Vicodin. Yeah. And apparently you find out too that she that she and him go way back because they I guess they knew each other in high school. Yeah. So anyways, um she gets a text from the guy to, to come on over, which you later find out that he never really sent. And the dude is now at his wit's end because again he's also now flipped out crazy with the smile thing and also well, he does drugs too. So um it's not until she's with him that he freaks out, similar to like the first movie, he freaks out, he passes out, he has, you know, like weird choking sounds, which of course it makes sense later. Mm -hmm. And then he gets up and starts smiling creepily, and he horribly bashes himself to death with a, with a weight thing. From, from a dumbbell. Yeah. yeah. For, or a weight But I mean, he keeps going until he's like literally like a, like a skull and whatever, and he falls over and stuff. Yeah. And she gets to witness all of that. And then the thing is also that due to her like trying to, you know, stay clean and and not have her reputation ruined, and there's drugs everywhere, and the guy's a drug dealer too, like she just runs out because she, she can't call the cops, it'll ruin her whole, you know, her, reputation. Her, yeah, she, cause she's trying to make that comeback after being, and also when she got into the accident, as, as mentioned, she was already being uh, under the, you know, under the microscope for doing, for substance abuse and things like that, mm -hmm. and the fact that there she was in that accident, both she and the other guy she was with, were you know yeah, Paul Paul Hudson is this other celebrity yeah guy. they are all um they, both of them were into all the that stuff. stuff yeah so then as you expect um now she starts seeing the visions too and she sees like like the creepy guy well or no the guy that she saw die keeps popping up here and there and um, I gotta say that um this movie really upped the ante Yep. They really had a lot more like jump scares and things, and like, like, one of them had the some thing. jump scares, but this one, wow, one of them got all of us. Yeah. Like the whole theater was just, ah, the hell, what the fuck? Like, well, at least know. I would say this with the jump scares, at least they didn't feel like pointless jump scares. Like some modern day, more scary type movies, they seem to have the jump scares there just for the sake of having a jump scare, mm -hmm. as for it to like 
be for it to be like naturally there. Yeah. And this one is just more just more intense with the illusions and the mind games and stuff. Because in the first movie, the closest thing we ever got was I guess that Rose that's the thing, I don't know if Rose actually killed her cat or the thing killed her cat. I don't know. But but the whole thing with the birthday thing, not knowing that it was a cat. Like in her mind she bought a toy train and wrapped it up and it was but a the, cat the all thing, along. But yeah, so yeah, so I mean she actually did not go to the toy store to get that train. That's the thing we don't you don't know. Yeah. So in this one, there's a scene that she was supposed to do like this big, well, not a big thing. It's a small, low key thing for like I guess kids with like disabilities. Yeah. Like oh no, it's um um underprivileged yeah, children. Underprivileged children. Um, I guess for the neighborhood and you know how you know the arts can help improve that because you know there are a lot of programs that you know get you into like art programs. You know, it could be like something with music or actual art. Yeah. You know, drama. You know, things like that. You know. Yeah. So she's supposed to like you know just smile there and then you know read the teleprompter. The teleprompter kind of craps out on her or who knows because all the mind game stuff. The other thing about the movie, you can't tell what's really there or not because you know uh, the the thing fucks with your brain. So in her case, um. I guess she dad lives it, but horribly. And yeah. goes into her own personal problems and stuff. Yeah. But then, yeah, but the thing is that in the crowd, her ex-boyfriend is there with the creepy smile. And he's like walking forward. And she's, of course, acting all freaked out. But everyone's looking at her like, like he's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then to top it off, there's like this old lady in the background that was kind of nearby. Yeah, so that, that she, welcomes her on the stage. Yeah. So when she turns, like the dude is grabbing her. And she's like, ah, like shoves him off. But then we find out, like in real life, it was the old lady. He, he, she, she bumped the old lady off stage. She fell through a table or something. And I'm like, holy crap! Because at least in the first movie, she wasn't uh, Rose wasn't like you know accidentally attacking people or whatever. So that was oh. like. Except for that one scene where she took out the knife and she thought she saw it in her board. Was like, whoa, whoa, bro, who's going? Yeah, on? yeah, but oh god. So then, um, drop the movie. Someone keep, like a mysterious person keeps texting her and telling her that, that what you're seeing is real. Like you have to help. You have, you know, you have to talk to me quickly. You know, your life's in danger and all that kind of stuff. So she finally agrees to go meet this guy. And this is kind of interesting because I was curious with the trader too. I was saying like, okay, so that's not the cop guy, some other guy. But then how does this guy know? And how how is he still alive to tell her this stuff? You know? Yeah. So in this version, um, so this guy, his brother died from that thing. And similar to, I'm assuming Rose and all that, like his brother was telling him of all this crazy shit, and he didn't believe it until he found out that 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 he died. And then of course, like, and he how, starts, how did he take himself out? Oh, I forgot. He his like, fa uh, crowbar. Oh God. Yeah, he Jason Todd himself. But anyway, <laughs> oh, um, to the face. Yep. So he looked through the pattern and stuff, and of course that includes Rose and also the cop guy. He was actually trying to warn the detective guy, but the guy made himself hard to find. So now he wants to warn this girl, and apparently, I, I guess his theory is that since the creature needs you to be alive to, to do the stuff, if she can, I guess, kill herself long enough for that thing to be gone, they can then resuscitate her, and then hopefully, like, it's, it's over. Yeah, his theory was that it's like a, per like a parasite. A parasite can't function unless it has a host. Mm -hmm. So she views the smile thing as a parasite that it used the living, you know, vessel mm -hmm. or a host. And the thing is, if you're wondering, no, he wasn't some kind of quack. He was actually an ER nurse or something like that. Yeah. He was in the medical profession, so he knew what to do and all that stuff. Yeah. Unfortunately, while meeting up with him in public, that kind of it got out that it was her because she made a slight scene while he was telling her this story and yeah. then people were like, oh dude, we saw the old lady falling over on, was it, on, on Instagram or whatever they were talking yeah. about. Oh, the, the TikTok or all that crap. Yeah. So a lot more stuff happens in the movie and it gets crazy and there's even parts where, where you think that she like stabbed and killed her mom in bloody it's, ways. It took her eye out. Yeah, yeah and, and it was like it was like the way it was. It looked like the mother was just standing herself, you know, with the smile thing. But then, like the 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 position turned, like the camera perspective changes, where you see that that um, she guy has the glass in her hand. It turns around and sees her mom was like killed, like like she killed her own mom and stuff like that. And and just things get you know it gets crazier. Um, this movie does a, a, a bit a better job than the first one with all the the weird fake outs and all the wait, but that wasn't real. Hey, but that wasn't real. Wait, what? What the fuck? This, you know, like like that. 
But um, now here's the real thing with the ending. Do you want to go at overall thoughts of the movie before we go to the ending part? Okay, for the movie, I actually kind of liked it. Like I said, it really messed with the mind here. And the thing with her is, is that, okay, now she has... Because she has, like, the mental thing going on anyway, even before all of this happened. Mm -hmm. Which is why which she... Which, of course, makes you a big target. Yeah. And she... That's why she turned to, you know, all the substances probably to begin with. Because, as mentioned, she's a celebrity. She's in the limelight. She feels like a wind-up doll. And her mother's, like, her manager, too. So that probably always pushed her over the edge. And apparently she's broken lots of... Uh, Friendships, including her best friend, that showed that she had some kind of falling out with. And she did call her. And she came over. And, yeah, this poor thing. I felt more, more sorry for her than I did for Rose. Mm -hmm. I felt bad for Rose, but I really feel sorry for her. Because, as mentioned, she really has very weak a very weak mental state and she yeah. even has that condition where you get where you have the anxiety where you pull your hair out i've heard of that i forgot what the term was but she even has that and she went back to that and oh i just felt bad for her yeah. so her having that fragile state of mind plus that thing getting to her and i think that's probably why compared to rose and in fact they had a bigger budget um <laughs> She had more <clears throat> mental fake outs compared to Rose mm. because her her mental mental health was so fragile to begin with. Yeah. Unlike Rose, she had that one major trauma and you know, she just never let it go, but you see it kinda gave her you know, she got into the profession of psychology and counseling too mm -hmm. to kinda balance that out. But with this girl, no. <laughs> But I thought it was a pretty good movie, a good sequel. But given where the ending goes, I just don't see how they could make another film. Yeah, I'll get into that in a bit. But but yeah, I did like this movie a lot um, better. Um, I like how, like, since you've already seen the first one, you kind of know the rules of, of how this thing works. Um, like, it does kind of go a bit with the, you know, the stuff that happened. It, like, like, you always kind of get that feeling that's kind of cool because you already kind of know where it's going. But, but in the story... It does take other twists and turns and does other things differently. The fake outs are a lot different now. And this time, like, like I guess the, the, the scariest thing is, like, herself. So, because, because, like, Rose kept seeing visions of her mother dying and stuff. This one, Rose keeps either reliving the car crash or even sees images of herself, like, when in her state when she was... I guess she got impaled by something which where she got the scar through the car crash and stuff. Mm -hmm. So... So she's still and like reliving that that stuff and everything. Yeah, because as you see, they did do a flashback of the whole car crash thing. She and um, the guy, oh, they were oh, arguing. Yeah. They were arguing, and she got mad. It, it was very, what's the word? Just very toxic between yeah, those very two. Yeah, very messed up. And, and she, she actually got mad, you know, and she grabbed the wheel, and that's how they lost control of their car, and that's how they had the accident. So. Technically, it was her fault. So yeah. she probably had it was harboring guilt from that. Yeah, because the dude also died in it. You know? Yeah, and he so died and she lived. guilt, I would, I would imagine, mm -hmm. and all that. And, uh, and then again, with the drugs and stuff, I kind of saw it coming in the way that when, you know, when we started establishing that she had the drug problem, I'm like, ooh, here we go. Whenever she started mm -hmm. seeing things, I was going to think she's going back on the drugs and yeah. all that. Yeah, that kind of thing. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that's the thing. I like, I like the movie's direction. It's, it's uh, scarier, bigger jump scares, a lot of, like, uh, more disturbing imagery than the first movie, I would say. Did you really yeah. Up? Yeah. But, anyways, uh, the big ending, I'm not going to spoil too much. Yeah, well, I, I guess, I mean, you can say it for yourself. I mean, but we can say, like, okay, at the end, the curse will obviously be passed on, but the question is, you just don't know who, because they just... Yeah. Situation they were. Uh, well, I don't want to explain that part. Just not the whole movie that leads up to that part. But yeah, but many the ending, uh, witnesses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So in the ending, uh, a lot of stuff happens. But in the end, I, I won't spoil too much. But she does end up on stage, and she's confused, like you know, due to things that happened in the movie. That now she's on stage. All of a sudden, she got to perform or whatever, and so she's there, and she has the demon thing go into her. Why on stage? I'm assuming. 
to the people watching, she probably collapsed and started screaming, and then she started doing all the choking sounds, because, you know, the, the fucking thing crawls inside you and everything. But it's so weird, because the way you see it, this, this fucker's, like, breaking you open to, to climb inside, because it's a giant-ass fucking room-filling monster. But to the average person, the person's just on the floor just uh, choking. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, she wakes up. You know, the crowd starts cheering and goes, hey, he's, he's okay. okay, but then he turns around with a creepy smile. And it is interesting, though, because considering the fact that we saw all this sick shit throughout the movie, I'm surprised they kept that off screen. It was more like the perspective of the audience watching horrifying. Yeah, we were seeing she, rea like, their reaction. Yeah, as she bludgeoned herself with the microphone, ending up with it, I guess, jamming into her eye and everything. And everyone, it just ends with everyone screaming. But of course, the implication is that with her doing this in a live audience, with all people watching, and you know what? To make it worse, if I were watching on TV or two or streaming. Oh, and internet and everything. Yeah. So, so yeah. everyone got to see this shit. So, so my thing is, um, either end the movie here because I don't know how you're gonna top it, or how you're gonna do the sequel because now there's gonna be, I'm assuming, thousands of people infected with this thing. And in my opinion... Probably millions if she's supposed to be like the Gaga of their world. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. She, she's Lady Gaga. That's all yeah. I gotta say. But the, the, the thing is, like... Personally, just end it here, guys. I think this is the highest note you could do it. You can't go higher than this. Um, like, the mind can go with... It's kind of like the Joker movie in the sense that it should have ended with the first movie. We did not have to see the sequel. Let the mind imagine how Arthur Fleck becomes a Joker with your own head cannon, your own whatever. Yeah. We didn't need to see it. And this one here, like, I'm curious how they're going to go, but I don't want to see a movie where everyone's infected and the government gets involved and the yeah, America that's a, that's what I would is say. under lockdown. Kind of like the Freddy Krueger movies, you know, the later movies start doing that. They put, like, all of Elm Street under, or Springwood under lockdown and all that stuff. They were putting, they were selling those drugs to everyone to keep everyone awake, hypnosil, whatever it's called. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't want to see... Because that's the thing, though, because then the movie does become more, you know, fictional, so to speak. It's cause, yeah, and the Nightmare on Elm Street movie is just a quick tangent. The first movies, everything still felt in the real world despite Freddy. But yeah. then when you start it was doing things, It was a bit more grounded. Yeah, right? but when you start doing like like massive lockdowns and hypno sill and whatever, it, it, you, you kind of lose that. And with these two movies, it still takes place grounded in our world. Like you said, Sky is pretty much the gaga of our world, of, of their world, you know. Like, I don't want a third movie to go into government shutdowns and whatevers and... It would, it would just take it too far from reality. And I also feel like the, the thing also works better when it's just you and everyone thinks you're crazy. Like, like if a big family or friend group goes there to the concert and they're all infected yeah, and the whole all, family's nuts. They all, 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 all of them saw it. Or even like your, your friend that could have been streaming it or something and, and you saw it too. And it'd be like, you see that? Oh yeah. my God. Like, you'd still be freaking but, 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 out, but, but there'd be more people no, no, no. believing you. No, but here's something I'm wondering now with how this thing works. Everyone that sees, like, someone, you know, do something like that to get that curse, mm -hmm. they have to see them in person. Would that count towards people who would have been streaming or watching it on TV because they mm. they're not there in person to see it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I guess in that case, maybe not. But it's still. A but big either way, crowd. that was a big crowd. That big crowd. That's, yeah. That's, that, uh, and like I said, like it doesn't work the same way. Like if a family member gets crazy, as opposed to the entire family, of course they're gonna believe each other. They're all seeing the shit. You know what I mean? Like so, I don't know how that would work. So I'm kind of thinking, guys, just just end it here. Just end it here because it is like the highest note. We can just let our imaginations run wild but with how this would happen. But unfortunately, no, they probably will make another one. But if they do, maybe they can just end it and just have an origin. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way I can see the, the, the direction of the series going. If they just do an origin sort of how this thing came about. And then maybe they can get rid of it once and for all. Or bring back the dude from the other movie that knows how to get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way I can see if they do something sort of, uh, about him. Yeah. You know, some story around him. Yeah, because that's the only thing I could see. That's another thing. I didn't think of that. But yeah, the only way it could go, maybe, without ruining, is, is a prequel. Mm. A prequel that shows who was the very first victim that started that, 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 that started this thing, I guess. Yeah, that's about it. And then just ended there. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless they do another movie to, like, legit end this curse. Yeah. And he's the dude from this this movie that actually knows what's going on whose brother kills himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's just weird. Like, I don't... 
like I don't know. Like I said, there's so many different directions. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Other than the prequel, because the thing is, the director also says he doesn't want to go too much into the origins of the thing because he wants to keep it exciting and, and scary. You know, and that, that's the you thing. know what that really means, right? What? I as you know, him, I just thought this well, was going to fly. Maybe, but, but you know what I mean. It's just. It, it does get less scarier when you find out like the whole backstory. Yeah, you, you mean like how Freddy Krueger was scary in the first couple, in the first movie, and then after that he like became more of a joke. Yeah, yeah, because you know more about him, you know more how, how he works, how to kill him, and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm just thinking about the TV thing. Yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> but 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 you get the idea. But yeah, the, the less you know about some. Um, cause you know, like vampires, whatever, I'll just toss some holy water in his face, you know what I mean? But like, the, the less you Unless know about- Unless it's Twilight! Yes. The, the, yeah, and say you just make out with the guy, I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> um, the less you know, the scarier it is, cause you don't even know what the fuck it is. And right now, there's this, this entity thing, you don't know what the hell it is. Most of the times it looks like someone you know with a big smile, whatever, so, so people just don't know, and all that. But, um, but yeah, the bottom line, that's what I'm saying, you know. you know what? That's kind of interesting too. All right, so for the first movie with Rose, mm -hmm. that entity was her mother, right? That yeah. took her over. And I want to assume for the cop guy, it would it would have been Rose, oh, probably Rose, probably Rose, right? Yeah. And then, then in the movie that you pointed out, there was a like when he ran past, he did see like like Rose on fire in the background, so he probably kept seeing visions of Rose burning and stuff. Yeah. Throughout the week. Yeah, now here's the thing. Mm. What I find interesting is that with uh, um, Gaga here, mm -hmm. the entity to take over her was herself. Yeah. Because that's, that's her main trauma, herself. And she, you know, even in her own mind, she feels like, you know, that she's kind of like a poison to everyone around her. That's how she truly felt. Yeah. So that's why I just really felt sorry for her. I mean, no esteem, no nothing, none of that stuff, you know? Yeah. Very low. Like I said, guys, I guess either prequel or just end it here because the, the, the note's too high. The bar's too high. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and some people said that this would be a, this is a director, I don't know his name, I apologize, uh, really built himself up with these two movies. He could use these two movies kind of like to start some other horror franchise. But, you know, now you have the thing, you know, for the director of Smile 1 and 2, we already got that high note to boost them up, you know. But for and sequel, yeah, and here's know. the thing, once they did the, jo the Joker 1 and 2, it was like, from the director of Joker, we don't talk about part 2, you know. Hey, yeah. like, the Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah. What? I don't know that movie. Okay, so anyways, guys, that uh, that's pretty much all we're going to say. Uh, but bottom line, if you like the first movie, you'll love the second one. It really does bump it up, and it does a good job of not, like, uh, repeating the first one too much. You know, just enough because, of course, the rules, but there's a lot of yeah, stuff that like, surprises you. And like I like said, that. it's just so interesting how you just couldn't tell the reality from the fantasy. Because they're just so, it was so intertwined. It, it, you really, really, it, it, you really wouldn't have picked up on it, honestly. Yeah. Mm hmm? Yeah. So anyways, guys, it's Mark signing off. And this is Wendy. I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to smile. Mm -hmm. Put on a happy face.